In the IELTS Task 2 Writing Test instructions, you're told to give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. So, the next requirement is that we present a clear position and support it with relevant reasons and examples. This is called constructing an argument. In your IELTS essay, you can build an argument by following this pattern. Make a general statement and be sure that it refers back to the points you outlined in your introduction. Then give a reason and or give an example. In an academic essay, you have to back up your argument with factual evidence such as statistics. In the IELTS exam, you do not have access to research materials such as books, journals or newspapers, but you can still make general statements based on your own knowledge and your experience to support your argument. Look at the following sentences. Which one is more convincing, A or B? A. Too much fast food is bad for your health. Or B. Scientific studies show that too much fast food is bad for your health. If you answered B, you're correct. An opinion that is held by many people, or by scientists, or by a respected person, is more convincing than an opinion which is only held by one person, the writer. When giving opinions, reasons and examples, try to include some general statements in your essay. For more ways that you can make general statements, take a look at the following examples. Here is some useful language for making general statements. It appears that many people prefer to drive themselves to work rather than catch public transport. It seems that many people prefer to drive themselves to work. It has been claimed that advances in technology will lead to greater unemployment in the future. It is often said that this nation does not properly value its artists. On the whole, childhood obesity is not a serious problem in my country. As I said previously, you need to give reasons and examples to support your ideas and your general statements. Here's some useful language for giving reasons. And here is some useful language for giving examples. There's also some language you need to avoid. After an expression like such as, it is appropriate to list a couple of ideas, but use for example rather than the abbreviation E.G. Another abbreviation to avoid is ETC. Even the full word etc. or expressions such as and so on are too vague. We definitely don't want our essays to be vague. Instead, it's important that each paragraph has just one central idea. So when you finish that paragraph with a general statement, a reason and or an example, it's time to move on to the next paragraph with a new main idea. Make sure once again that it's an idea that you have outlined in your introduction and one that supports your overall argument. Let's take a look at an example. So here is the task again. And here is the introduction. Let's see whether the writer of this example agreed or disagreed with the statement in the task. The writer states that space exploration programs are a waste of money. We can see that the writer's position has been clearly stated and the writer agrees. The rest of the essay has been outlined and we should expect to see three body paragraphs focusing on poverty, disease 
and the environment. Let's take a look. That looks good. We can see that the body of the essay has three paragraphs and each paragraph covers one of the ideas outlined in the introduction. And there is just one main idea per paragraph. So we know that the essay has a clear overall position and addresses the task. Let's have a look at each paragraph in a bit more detail. We want to see a general statement and that the ideas are supported with reasons and or examples. We also want to see that the paragraphs have been linked to each other using cohesive devices. These work like the glue that sticks them together. Take a moment to read the general statement and the reason with examples. In the second paragraph, we can see a link to the previous paragraph. Then, there's a general statement which is surrounded by examples. In this paragraph, we can also see another sentence supporting the central idea of the essay, that governments should not be spending money on space exploration. Take a moment to read the paragraph. Here is the third body paragraph, and we know it's the last body paragraph as it starts with the linking phrase, finally. This is followed by the general statement, and then the reason. As you can see, each paragraph must have just one central idea, introduced with a general statement, and then supported by reasons and examples. And each one of these paragraphs in the body of your essay needs to support the overall position that you have taken. You must also ensure that you have addressed all of the parts of the question. If you keep all of these things in mind as you write the body of your essay, you should be able to do a good job of responding to the task.